Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. About two weeks ago, this thing went this way, and this thing was where the gauge was regarding how the media uh, portrayed the actions, the fact, the developments in Ukraine, and how everybody was supporting, you know, everybody in the West, everybody being the politicians, the, you know, those guys, uh, supporting Ukraine 100%. Now that thing started to go this way, like a collapse, uh, in the past two weeks. And that is by the statements of some politicians, leaders, important leaders, by their terms that they used to talk about Ukraine and about the peace uh, that Ukraine might have to um, discuss with the Russians, about how the events were were explained uh, by the even by the corporate media in the West, so there there was an uh, um, from this like it's all good we're on it we're gonna win uh, the Ukrainians are all good the Russians are all bad things started to tick this way fall this way and I said well something happens uh, the Ukraine must must Ukrainian must be losing big somewhere and the Russians as they all did since February twenty fourth advanced slowly but you know. Uh, clearly towards the towards west so uh, the way i see things here is ukraine is pushed by two countries mainly i would say 98 percent and there is great britain which i would give you give it about 60 percent then the rest is uh what 38 i would give it to uh um, washington uh, United States and two percent by everybody else would be the Germans. Uh, what do we have here to gain? The French, uh, we must uh, do this, and then Italy tries to be over there. Hey, I, I'm with you guys too. That's basically what is the big coalition of the monolithic West. I'm not talking about Poland; it has no value because it doesn't have any uh, any uh, control or any decision-making power. The same the Baltic states are just you know little dogs barking over there and. They will gonna get it at the end. I guarantee you, somehow, not necessarily militarily. If they don't make the <sighs> too many mistakes, like they just did, I just posted a video regarding 80 Polish fighters killed by the Russians. They claim, and 20 were killed in April, and the Russians were claiming that the Poles are fighting in Ukraine, and the Poles, no, 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 and we all know they are. But now, oh my God, 80 more killed according to the Russians, not necessarily true. But since we believe one side and we don't believe the other ones, I reserve my um, right to say, we don't know, that's what they claim. Now the same thing with Ukrainians, when Ukrainians say that they killed almost 35,000 uh, Russians in Ukraine, I've said, yeah, probably according to them, the same here, according to them. But we see here the boss, the big uh, puppeteer talking here. U UK fears Ukraine will be coerced to make a bad peace, Prime Minister Boris Johnson stated. This comes. This article comes from Al Jazeera, uh, from today, the 25th of June, 2022. So, UK fears Ukraine will be coerced to make a bad peace. Prime Minister says the UK Prime Minister has said he feared Ukraine could face pressure to agree a peace deal with Russia that was not in its interest due to the econ economic consequences of the war in Europe. And let's unpack this. The UK Prime Minister, that one of the, he's not the boss, but he's the the guy that represents the boss, the puppeteer of Ukraine. That's my assessment. Based on what I see so far and their statements, everybody else is more, but these guys are like the biggest, biggest supporters. Remember when the four uh, horsemen of the apocalypse, apocalypse came to Kiev, which is Macron was Scholz, Draghi and the Romanian president, uh, Johannes, they came to Kiev to talk to uh, Zelensky, unannounced. And then what happened the next day after they left? Boris Johnson landed over there. He left everything home, including his ladies of the night and the alcohol, went straight to, to Kiev to tell Zelensky, Zelensky, cut the crap, forget what they said, we are the ones, okay? What do you think they spoke about? What, flowers and paintings? And no, they didn't talk about that. And they didn't talk over the phone because they know all those are tapped. So I said, I'm going to go straight eye to eye right here. Bang, bang. That's how it was. So now the UK Prime Minister has said that he fears Ukraine could be pressured. By whom? To agree a, a peace deal with Russia 
that was not in its interest. Okay, what would be a peace deal that would be in the interest of Ukraine? That would be the Russians going back to the borders, all those Ru Russians from its territory disappear somehow, and the only Ukrainians over there, because you don't want those over there, since you ban their language, their uh, radio stations and uh, schools and so on, so get them out, this, you know, maybe you're gonna swap some population, like a, you know, and then um, uh, then the Russians will pay about, uh, I don't know, 50,000 billion uh, dollars to Ukraine for reparations, will apologize, Ru uh, Putin will uh, commit some uh, scratching on his temple, and so on, right? Is that, is that, that's a good, we'd say fair, uh, and maybe a re-resurrected dead. Is that a good thing too? Unbelievable. So this would be a good, normal uh, peace treaty. Well, that's impossible. Okay, that's impossible. The most likely is going to be the Russians going to come over more and more and more, and you're going to have to do something because your population will be up. And then that, what's coming next, that would be the pressure put on him, which I was talking about it for a long time ago, since these guys placed sanctions, these guys being the Western countries, placed sanctions on themselves by placing sanctions on Russia, inserting themselves in the Russia-Ukraine scuffle. They just, oh, we, we, we are in it. Why are you in it? Why are you in it? Oh, moral virtue? Okay, now you get it. So here it is. That's why he said, under the pressure, the, the economic consequences of the war in Europe, is not the, 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 of the war. The war could have been conducted between Russia and Ukraine without disrupting anything in Europe. Zero anything. So it was not the war that disrupted it, it, anything in Europe. It was the Europe who disrupted its ec economies by imposing sanctions, introducing itself in the equation of two countries, sovereign countries, having a problem to discuss. They inserted themselves. So it was not the war. If the, the, if the Europeans would have stayed like this, would have had everything and it would not be any economic pressure due to war. Guarantee you that. But they inserted themselves in this, in this imposed sanctions, so they shoot themselves, as I said, in their own foot. So now Boris Johnson is just spinning the thing. Oh, it's just because of the war. No, it's because you decided to get involved in something that you did not have to be in. You choose to be. So it's your choice. It was not pushed on you somehow. Or your morality just all of a sudden woke up. But it was no morality in Yugoslavia, right? In Iraq, in Syria, in uh, Libya, in Afghanistan. No morality there. Boy, it was morality because we are the forces of the good. All right, roll my eyes like a roly poly, like a, you know, you go to the casino and you play the slots, clang, 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 how they roll. The same, my eyes do this when I read these guys. So, yeah, a bad deal. They will be pressured because Europe is first, winter is coming and Europe will not have gas. So, yeah, there will be, and the economies go like this. So, what do you think they're going to do? Screw you, Boris and uh, Biden. Too many countries are saying this is a European war that is unnecessary, Boris Johnson said, yes. And so the pressure will grow to encourage, coerce, coerce maybe, the Ukrainians to a bad peace, Johnson told broadcasters in the Ru Rwandan capital Kigali when he was attending a Commonwealth summit. He said the consequences of Russian President Vladimir Putin being able to get his way in Ukraine would be dangerous to international security and a long-term economic disaster. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, the same scare tactic. Oh, he's coming to get you too after they get the Ukrainians. In ignoring all the evidence and the fact and what happened over there with the Russian population in the East Ukraine. What about Minsk agreements did you, that you didn't sign because you were disagree with that? Why did you disagree with that? Because you were waiting for this. And you had it after what? Eight years of waiting? 2014 to 2018? To 2022, I'm sorry. Right? 2014, Minsk agreements? It's so obvious. It's so obvious. So yes, there will be pressures, but those pressures, I don't know how the, that pressure would, would uh, make Ukraine make peace because, it, as I said, it's Great Britain and United States. Not Germany, who's suffering the most. Not France, who suff suffers. Not Italy, who suffers again a lot. So yes, he knows what he's talking about, but he's talking it in a veiled way. And then he talks about, oh, there will be pressure. Of course, will be pressure. And then if, if this happens, Putin is going to get next what? Poland or you? Which one is going to be next? Can you give us a list? So we know at least in advance what Putin plans to do next, get, I don't know, parts of the United States maybe, or Australia, or what, Japan? Tell me, I mean, really, 
is a scare tactic trying to make us because they say it's it was an unprovoked and unreasonable war or not reasonable it was a different term not <laughs> reasonable you have uh, without reason unjustified unjustified really i think the russians can give you at least 50 justifications why they did that and you can see that because it, it was over there they told you that's a red line this don't do this go to minsk agreements do do this they don't, they don't want to talk about another minsk agreement no no, we signed that there. Let's do that. If we if we scrap that and we start this one, what would make me think that you're not going to scrap this one and you're going to get to the next one? No, no, no. No, credibility. You lost it a long time ago. So nevertheless, Boris Johnson is talking. But that reveals what I was been telling you. That's a big rupture in Europe and that's going to be done in October. September, October is going to be the pressure when the Europeans say, that's it, time out. And yet, that would be it. Fan and uh, bye bye. See ya. This is going to be because they're going to be going down, 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 and will be cold in Europe. I guarantee you that. So, Boris Johnson, yeah, he's, he's doing fine right now. But, and he's afraid that this uh, coalition uh, dismantles, which it is. It's been for the past uh, two weeks at least. Some countries were coerced into uh, joining here, and it was Germany. Coerced to uh, impose all those, those sanctions and close the Nord Stream 2 before it even start, you know, cut itself, you know, from the gas and oil from Russia. Why? And its economy down, goes lower than the other ones who imposed it on them. Like the Americans told them, hey, you got to do this, you got to do this. You're bad dudes. Remember Second World War? You're bad dudes, remember? And say, oh, we got to do it. So they did it. They shoot themselves. And the Americans are not doing as bad as the, the Germans. The Germans are doing bad. They're affected the most. Because their economy needs it. Their economy is going to be losing, going to contract more than the Americans. So the Americans are going to be what? Have more hegemony on the planet, on the economics. Who helps with LNG now, Germany? Besides others, right? The United States came with extra, extra money. You pay more for our LNG, liquefied natural gas. Because you, we told you, you get rid of the Russian one. So, so they can't blackmail you. But now, guess what? We can. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.